Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Brent, and we had prayer meeting again tonight. A lot going on at the church. Uh, ladies are getting ready for a fall retreat, and they're uh, having a meeting about that tonight. We have the youth group meeting. We had an interview for a baptism we're having at the end of the month uh, in our morning service, and just a lot of fun things going on, but we need to support them all in prayer. So that's why we have prayer meeting. And as I think about prayer meeting, last week I shared about the power outage that I had been through. Uh, my family had been through our neighborhood. Uh, not everybody was out as long as we were, but from Monday night until Wednesday night, right before prayer meeting, we had no power. Doing a lot of thinking about the freezer and were we going to lose anything. We didn't, we didn't lose anything. And uh, the refrigerator, we lost some things. That's a shorter amount of time. We got to, should have dealt with that sooner. But this afternoon, I have some work being done at my house and the gentleman was cut, cutting some plywood and, and um, the, the saw stopped working. He thought, well, it's an old saw, it's broken. Then he realized the power's not quite working. And yet not everything went off. There were some lights that had kind of a, just a glow to them. Uh, some appliances turned off completely. Others were working. I had a fan that was at my feet and it would, it stopped running full power, but every so often it would go a little bit and then it would stop. And I didn't know what this was. I've never experienced this. I found out it's a brownout. It just, there's not enough power to power uh, everything. So then the next question, is it my problem or is it the neighborhood problem? And that wasn't easy because our neighbor died the, the, uh, next to us and the new people haven't moved in yet. There's another uh, uh, person who just moved out and sold his house and there's a people that were flipping it. I didn't see anybody in that parking lot. And the two houses I knocked on the doors, no one answered. So I couldn't quite tell. So I finally called MedEd and they said, yes, there is a problem. It'll be taken care of by six o'clock. And I hope that they were right. Um, and I just kind of had to go through it. But it made me think, I had other verses I was going to share tonight, but it made me think about the difference between a blackout and the difference between a brownout. And a brownout, the power is there, but it's not quite working the way you expect. And I'm going to look at a couple of verses that maybe will relate to that. Let's pray first. Father, I thank you. I thank you so much for your great love and how you reveal yourself to us in our circumstances and in your word. Help us to apply your word to the, sick, the things around us that are happening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Colossians 1.11, Paul prays for the Colossian church. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Now, obviously, what's the prayer request for Paul? That they would be strengthened with all power. That could mean a lot of things, but they're going to be strengthened, and it's going to be a lot. But at least say it's a lot. What's, what is the source of this power, according to this verse? According to his, God's glorious might. It's not something we have to manufacture. It's kind of like what I was trying to figure out. Is this a problem I have to fix at my house, or is this something that the power company has to take care of? Well, according to this spiritual power, it's not something we manufacture. It's something that we receive from the Lord, according to his glorious might, that we could be strengthened with all power. And what's the purpose? What's the purpose of all power? For all endurance and patience with joy. Those are some loaded words. So I ask myself, what is the difference between endurance, patience, and joy? And I came to this answer. Endurance means I'm never planning on giving up. I'm going to endure whatever it takes. Patience, while I'm enduring, may run thin, and I get impatient pretty quick. But if I'm, if I'm really relying on all power, I can endure and be patient in the midst of my enduring. Like, I'm not going to quit, but I, I sometimes I have a bad attitude while I'm not quitting. So I, I want to pray for patience. And then going to the attitude, and I can actually do this with joy. Maybe... I'm not impatient and flying off the handle, but am I really joyful? It's going to take all power, according to his glorious might, for me to endure and have patience in my endurance and to find joy in my endurance. That's a thing worth praying for. And I hope you would pray that for yourself, that you would have all power according to his might, that you may walk in endurance, patience, and joy. Now, the other part of this, Paul, the Jesus told John to write to the church in Philadelphia, uh, first century church. And he said, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. Now here's two things right here. First of all, he talks about the works. Does that mean 
that God's open door is dependent upon uh, our works? No, no. God knows our works, and because he knows those works, he is putting an opportunity, an open door for them. So then I ask this question, who can shut God's open door? God says no one can shut it. Of course, he could, but he chooses not to. Now, then he says, I know that you have but little power. This was the first that I kind of drew this Bible study from. I know that you have a little power. What does that mean? What does it mean to have a little power? My thought was the all-powerful Holy Spirit resides in me. So if it's if I'm if if there's only a little power, it's because I'm quenching it, because I'm not completely filled with the spirit, because I'm holding back. But then someone else tonight, when we talked, said, Well, sometimes God takes away our power. Uh, limits the power because he wants his strength to be made perfect in our weakness. When Paul had his thorn in the flesh, Paul could heal people. If, if his thorn in the flesh was something physical, why did he just heal himself? Because God, God wanted him to rely on him. So little power could mean that I'm not quite walking the way I should walk, but it might just mean that God only wants us to have a little power. Someone pointed out, if you have too much power, it corrupts you. Um, Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So God gives us the power we need. So as I was sitting there in my brownout, I was thinking about how, Lord, I have enough power. My computer still works. Uh, my phone wouldn't charge, but my computer stayed charged. So it, it was just really a weird thing. I've never experienced a brownout before. But that a little power. And then what does he say? And yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So what can we do with little power? With all power, I could be in, enduring, patient, and joyful. With little power, I can keep his word and not deny his name. That's what we can do with little power. And when I think about keeping his word, I'm not talking about completely obeying it because no one does that perfectly in this life. But keeping it as the main foundation for my life in this world. We're all always looking for answers. And I want to first come to the word of God. That when I read these verses tonight, and this is just a, a kind of a, an example of how to do a Bible study. Read the verse and ask yourself questions. What does that mean? What, does this, what could this mean? What do I do with that? Um, so what does it mean to keep his word? It means that his word is going to be my guide. I have tons of books in my office. Some are behind me here. Uh, the best books are the ones that point me to the word of God. They're the most reliable. They even, even they could misinterpret the words, but, but the other people just writing about the things of the day and this will help. We've observed this and this will really help. That's not as strong as what his word offers. Now there's good things in all those books, but you have to make sure you filter it through the word. of God. That's to me what it means keeping the word. If there's a contradiction between the word of God and something else I have in a book, I'm going to go with God's word every time. And then what does it mean to not deny his name? There are things that God allows in my life that I wish he wouldn't. But I never want to deny his name. I never want to say that's it. I'm done. I, I quote this all the time. Uh, in John 6, there were a lot of disciples that were leaving following Jesus. And he looked at the 12 and he said, do you want to go too? And Peter said, where else are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. I will not deny that Jesus is the Savior who brings eternal life. I will not deny that Jesus' word is what I'm going to live my life upon. So whether I'm in a blackout with no power at all, no. As a, as a Christian, I don't think I ever get to that place. But I do have little power sometimes. But if I can take that little power and keep his word and not deny his name, it won't be long before he gives me all the power that I need to walk with him and to serve him and go through the open doors that he opens for me. I pray that for you as well. Let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you just for a simple thing like a brownout. It was a new experience for me today that made me think, what can you do with just a little power? Well, according to your word, we could still do a lot. And it's in that little power that we can grow and get the power completely turned on. I was told by the electric company it would turn on by six. It turned on about 10 minutes before six. So it, everything's good. But uh, thank you for the lesson that it challenged me with. 
and ask that you bless us to walk in all power when you provide it. And when we recognize we only have a little power, help us to, to turn it toward the right things, your word and your name. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. God bless.